In this topic, we're going to look at the blood vessels, the arteries, veins, and capillaries. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is a double circulatory system, and what are the layers of the blood vessels? How are the different blood vessels adapted to their functions? We're going to look at the artery, arteriole, vein, venule, and capillary. Now, as blood flows through the capillaries in the lungs, it loses pressure. Therefore, it needs to be returned to the heart to boost its pressure. So blood passes through the heart twice in each complete circuit. This is called a double circulatory system. So blood goes through the systemic circuit, which is the pathway from the heart to the body and back, and the pulmonary circuit, which is the pathway from the heart to the lungs and back. So here you can see the pathway of blood as it goes through the different parts of the heart as well. Now the advantage of a double circulatory system is that it keeps the oxygenated, which you can see represented by the red in this diagram, and the deoxygenated represented by the blue, blood separate. It also allows for high pressure in the systemic circuit. So here you can see the different blood vessels. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. So smaller arteries are called arterioles, and veins carry blood towards the heart. Smaller veins are called venules. Then you've got the capillaries, which are smaller vessels that link the arteries to the veins. Here you can see transverse sections of the artery and vein. There are three main layers that you need to know and to be able to compare between the artery and the vein. So both the veins and arteries have a tough outer layer of collagen fibers called the tunica externa. The tunica media comprises smooth muscle and elastic fibers. And the tunica intima is the inner layer that is made of squamous endothelium cells. So as we discuss the structure of each of these vessels, relate them to their functions. Here you can see the little capillary. So it doesn't have these different layers. Instead, it's only one cell thick, and it's made of a single layer of endothelial cells. So take a moment to look at the different layers, the tunica externa, tunica media, and tunica intima. Right, let's see if you can recognize the different layers in the blood vessels. One, two, three, and four. So number one is the tunica intima, the endothelium. This comprises flat cells that fit together. Two is the tunica media, the middle layer. It comprises smooth muscle, collagen, and elastic fibers. Three is the lumen, that empty part where the blood flows through. And then four is tunica externa, the outer layer. This comprises collagen and elastic fibers. Okay, let's look at the differences between arteries and veins and capillaries. So think of a few structural differences. Well, the artery's got a thick muscular wall, the vein has got a thin muscular wall, and the capillary has no muscle. The artery's got lots of elastic tissue, the vein has little elastic tissue and the capillary's got no elastic tissue. So the artery is capable of constriction. The vein is not capable of constriction. Neither is the capillary. The artery has got a small lumen relative to its diameter and this changes with blood pressure. The vein's got a large lumen relative to its diameter, and the lumen's about the same as a red blood cell. 
the capillaries also got quite a large lumen relative to its diameter. The artery is not permeable, neither is the vein, but the capillary is permeable. Now the artery has only got valves in the aorta as well as the pulmonary artery. Veins have got valves throughout them and capillaries do not have valves. What do you think the differences are for the function? Well, arteries transport blood away from the heart, veins transport blood to the heart, and then capillaries link the arteries to the veins, so they're the site of exchange of substances between the blood and tissue fluid. And the blood transported, so arteries transport oxygenated blood, veins transport deoxygenated blood, except for the pulmonary vein, and then capillaries transport both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. So the blood pressure is very high in the artery. It's low in the vein and in the capillary the blood pressure is reducing. So in the artery blood moves in pulses. In the vein there are no pulses, neither are there any pulses in the capillary. In the artery the blood flows rapidly. In the vein the blood flows slowly and in the capillary, the blood flows slowly. Okay, can you remember the function of the arteries? This is to transport blood away from the heart to the tissues. So the artery has a thick elastic layer when blood is forced from the heart into the arteries, it creates a pulse of high pressure. The elastic walls allow for the artery to withstand this pressure. So as pressure gets less when the blood flows along the arteries, so the relative thickness of the wall also gets less, the further away the artery is from the heart. Now it's important that the blood pressure is kept high to reach the extremities of the body. So when the elastic wall is stretched, it springs back. And this recoil action creates another surge of pressure that carries blood forwards in a series of pulses. So the collagen in the outer layer or the tunica externa prevents the artery from bursting under pressure. And the thick wall also prevents the artery from bursting under pressure. The artery doesn't have valves, except for the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So the blood is already under high pressure, so it doesn't need valves. There should be no backflow. Now, arterioles have walls that are similar to arteries. They've got more smooth muscle and the muscle can contract to control blood flow into a tissue. So here you can see the arterioles connected to capillaries. There are special sphincters called precapillary sphincters that can constrict and block off the capillary bed. This means that blood will be shunted directly to the venule. Capillaries are the site of exchange of substances between the blood and the tissue fluid. So they've got very thin walls, only one cell thick. This creates a short diffusion distance. So diffusion is rapid between the cells and the blood. They are also numerous and highly branched, which provides a large surface area for diffusion. They've got a narrow diameter, so they can go between the cells and the tissues, which means that no cell is far from a capillary. The narrow lumen 
means that the red blood cells are squeezed flat against the side of the capillary, bringing them closer to the cells to which they supply oxygen. And this also reduces the diffusion distance. If you have a look at this diagram here, you can see they've got spaces between the endothelial cells. These allow for the white blood cells to escape. Okay, veins. So veins transport blood to the heart from the tissues. The elastic layer is thin because the low pressure of blood within the veins will not cause them to burst. And the pressure is also too low to create a recoil action. The muscular wall is also thin because veins carry blood from tissues and therefore their constriction and dilation cannot control the flow of blood to the tissues. The collagen in the outer layer does provide a tough outer layer to prevent the veins from bursting. And this is more from external forces, for example, if you bash your leg. The overall thickness of the wall is small because there's no need for a thick wall as the pressure within the veins is too low to create any risk of bursting. So it allows them to be flattened easily, which helps with the flow of blood. Veins have got semi-lunar valves throughout them. This ensures that the blood doesn't flow backwards, which might otherwise happen because the pressure is quite low. So when the muscles of the body contract during movement, veins are compressed, as you can see in this diagram here. This puts pressure on the blood and it forces it forwards towards the heart. And then you've also got valves there, and these prevent the backflow. So here's a lovely diagram to show you the valves in the vein. So when they close, they prevent the backflow of the blood. Right, in summary, what have we looked at? Well, what is a double circulatory system? This is how the blood travels through the heart twice on one complete circuit of the body. So you've got two pathways, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. Can you remember the different layers of the blood vessels? These are the tunica externa, tunica media and tunica intima. So we also discussed how the different blood vessels are adapted to their functions and looked at the differences between arteries and veins and capillaries. See if you can remember the structural differences, the functional differences and the differences in the transport of the blood. And that concludes our lesson, the end.